Lee Duffy, The Blood Moon, the second, um, the sequel to the Amazon best-selling. It was also a best-seller in uh, Middlesbrough Waterstones. Uh, I did two books on Paul Sykes. And what my mistake was, was when I did Unfinished Agony, I released Fever Agony, six months to the day. Um, and it taught me it taught me an invaluable lesson because it didn't although in my opinion Fever Agony was a better book because it was more about people from the Lupset estate, people in prison. Um it didn't really have the same same kind of effects in sales. So I learned my lesson if you like, and um what I did with um a few months after a few months after the Hall of the Moon, people were saying, Oh wow, what a book. There's got to be a sequel. Um, I think it must have been about after about two or three months. I was like, uh, yeah, they were just. I was just getting bombarded, literally, just saying you've got to do another book. Um, so the Blood Moon came out. Uh, what are we in now? <clears throat> Come out in August two thousand and nineteen. Exactly one one year to the day. Uh, that was a, an Amazon bestseller as well. The book itself is um, it's slightly different to The Hall of the Moon because although there's uh, maybe the first Hall of the Moon was there was thirty people. I think there's about twenty in this, but there's more. There's more with my words, if you like. You know, I, I've actually done chapters. Um, Lee's beginning. Um, fighting prowess, Lee Duffy's playground, influences, uh, crazy times of booby, Lee Duffy at large, uh, and yeah, kind of mixed it in. But one thing with, which was with that book was, um, I'd got like, I mean, there's a, there's a policeman in there, a policeman who'd only um, his only dealings were with Lee Duffy. Where to basically on a on a on a daily basis to try and put him behind bars, um, and incidentally it was the same police officer who built the um, the, the the case f a court for the eight day trial in nineteen ninety three, and uh, yeah it was really interesting listening to him. You know he'd gone from being sat in a room with him, interviewing Lee Duffy, where he'd just say, "Look, I'm the bad guy. You're the good guy." Um, I, res I know what you're trying to do. I respect you. He'd just sit there and just say, no reply, no reply. He had, um, the police officer said he was kind. He wasn't what you thought. You know, you see the picture of Lee, big, you know, kind of looking um, the way he was, you know, very intimidating looking by all accounts. But he said he wasn't like that. He said he was quite softly spoken and calm and he, he wouldn't swear. Um, you know, and there's there's actually um there's a court there's a there's a, a court document in that book and people were just like, How did you get that? Um <clears throat> yeah, it was quite hard. I had to sift through hours and hours, literally days, um of in the archives, you know, I'd sat reading the old gazettes. Um yeah, it's it's all like different accounts and and like the first one. That book builds up a picture again. Um, it is it is the final book I'm doing on Lee. I've been asked a few times. There's got to be a final moon. Um, yeah, you know. Listen, if Neil Boo rang me today, uh, which he's not going to, then I would. Um, although Lee was 26, what was quite um, clear to me was. He had enough books in him. He could, I could have done loads, absolutely loads. It could have been like Chopper Reed, Volume Eleven, and all this kind of stuff. But I, I'm leaving it at that. And um, obviously, other people have come along and do this. You know, maybe siblings or close friends or ex-girlfriends might ever do one one day. But I'm, I'm done. Um, so yeah, and that was it. Went crazy again. I call it Duff Mania in Middlesbrough. Um, just people just went absolutely berserk for for that book. Uh, yeah, the forwards by Stephen Sears. It was obviously very close to Lee, and it's you know it's, it's in my opinion and, and a lot of um, 
people who were close to around Lee that said actually it's the better book. Um, even people like um, like Paul Bryan read it, who was inside a prison, inside a prison, and he said, you got that bang on. And it's nice to hear because obviously um, I get a lot of critics saying, well, oh, you, you can write a book, you didn't know him. Um, excuse me. And um, yeah, for someone like, for, for the people around Lee Duffy, um, who've spoken to me, you've said, you've actually got that really bang on. And um, obviously Paul Bryan, in the end, was his was his sworn enemy, if you like, and done 10 months on demand for the conspiracy to, to murder Lee. But once upon a time, they were really, really close. And um, he said, yeah, he said, there's a lot of stuff in there, much more accurate to the first one. Um, that's what Paul's opinion of it was. Um, yeah, and it's... It's had a huge response again. People, I get so many messages from um, from people even all over the world, Australia or Americans. Um, yeah, and, and there's been quite a few famous people read it again as if the first one, you know. Pub, I'm not going to name them, but my publisher said, oh, that footballer bought it today or that ac actress or certain things. And people are, are really, really interested in the story. It's got, this book has bits of poetry in it, which the first one didn't. Um, and it just basically paints a picture of of one man's life who, you know, unbelievably, it was, there was nothing, it, it wasn't a tall story. There was nothing fabricated about that, it, that, Happened once upon a time, as I said with my other video. Um, yeah, and it's out now if you want to buy it from Amazon, $12.95, paperback edition. The Kindle's £4.95, you can get it from eBay, Amazon. Um, and we are, at the minute, just on the verge of putting it in the audio. Um, so that's going to be available to listen to. I know a lot of people have, have asked me over the years, you know, if you th it's, it's as I said, it's... It's a very costly outlay, um, but it's one I'm happy to um, to. Sean Atwood's joined forces with us, so he's kind of financed the books because um, obviously he sees uh, the huge potential in 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 what it's been in the whole story. It's been uh, it's been fascinating, but yeah, um, that is my last book. Um, certainly until someone of I wouldn't go around and interview thirty people or twenty. 20 people if there was ever a case of doing another book with Lee it would have to be with someone really really close to him where it would just be one person um but yeah I have I've even had you know even some of the critics I won't name but um I've got the messages that I kept and they've said well you know we were against you and um you know it's really hard for me to say this but thank you you've done a good job and yeah, you know, I understand, listen, there's, you know, there's a lot of authors come along, done things in certain books, got his children's names wrong, um, stories wrong, uh, you know, and, and it was, and that for, as, for me as an author would have been unforgivable, especially someone who's grew around the Teesside scene, um, so each book is meticulously looked over, um, you know, there is things in there, um, I can only, I can't, when I'm sat listen when I'm sat taping and interviewing someone, I can't um how can I put it? I can't wire them up with a lie detector test. So when these people, you know, there's one story, um Lee's uncle told me about um allegedly beating Paul Sykes up and um yeah, that was his take on it and I you know, I spoke to a couple of other people and they said that was you know it never happened but all I can do is um, I can't put a lie detector to, to, to people. All I can do is kind of get people's side of things, um, which I have done for the Blood Moon. Um, and in my opinion, obviously I'm biased, but, you know, it's... Um, I mean, the chapter that does it for me, there was a chapter in the Hall of the Moon. Uh, obviously I can't reveal his name, but it was used um, like a pseudonym, pseudonym of a, um, a false name. Uh, uh, it's the biggest chapter in the book. It might be forty, fifty pages, and it was. It tells you all about the Battle of the Bongo. Uh, a really, really um, well-known person in Middlesbrough. Give me that. 
But obviously, I had to respect his um, his wishes, and and that's he's been used. But this book, um, that in that there's a fifty page chapter on Vince Agar, um, and that is that chapter alone. People have said was was worthy of the money. Um, Vince, he's living living lives out in Asia at the minute, and uh, he was very very close to Duffy. knew him as a, knew the parents before that. Um, and yeah, you know, a few people said to me, "You need to speak t- t- to Vince." Um, I got fifty pages out of him, but that was just the tip of the iceberg. You know, it's just, even like the st- after I'd finished doing the book, he kept sending me these stories, and I was like, "Oh God, I wish I'd have used it." You know, really, really funny stories, sad stories. Um, you know, all different kind of things, and. I was just thinking, oh God, you know, it literally, he, he sent me, he sent me enough to literally fill another fifty-page chapter. Um, but yeah, I am done with the T side books now. Uh, there's been a few. Um, I think I have kind of realised that it is close to warm. So the a very South Bank story by Paul Venice is more certainly my last one. Um, I get a lot, lots of offers now. And I think just my one golden rule is just do not do any from Teesside. Um, you know, even if you do a, a you're always, you're, there's always someone that's going to get upset. Um, you know, it's like literally walking through a a field of crocodiles where you, you know, you, although you're trying to leave some out to protect one person, someone else will get offended. Um, but you know, I, I I remember reading Stephen Richards' books only. 19 20 years ago and um they're still about now so my hope is the whole of the moon and the blood moon are as iconic as they are because they've done really really well and fair play to the guy he was the one who, who did the uh was probably brave enough if you like done the blueprint to to, to think well actually hang on I won't just write a book on Lee Duffy I'll do Viv Graham as well and um I know he, he upset a lot of people but yeah, balls of steel that guy must have had. And um, but yeah, I'm done. And uh, that's the Blood Moon, guys. There's, there's a few links on this video. If you click on that, you can get direct buy from Amazon. Um, it's in all of. You should be able to order that in most. Well, every single three hundred and thirty of the Warstones in Britain. Um, and yeah, it was um, it was enjoyable to do. Had its downsides as, as um. As always, with anyone, as you know, all the books I've done, I think probably not as much as this one. Um, but obviously, obviously, you know, it was different. It's different to do a book on someone if you live two hundred miles away. This was literally on my doorstep, and um, you know, even though I've tried to, even though I've done this with a true heart and really been um, careful, there's other, you know, and you try and protect a certain couple of. And you think, right, I'm not going to let them read that. And then someone else will get upset about, you know. So, yeah, John Pierce said to me, he said that you've either got balls of steel or you're really off your head. He said, I don't know which one you are, but they're done now. Um, what I would like to say uh, before I finish off is I, f- I did a video last night and I forgot to mention it. The uh, the Hall of the Moon was, um, it did support Scope for quite a while. Um, but now we change that to, to support the Frankie Lee Boo Fund. This book here supports two great causes. It supports the Frankie Lee Boo Fund and it supports a little boy who's got no legs. Um, so some of the uh, the royalties each month pay forever. Um, there's a little boy. It was chosen by someone extremely close to Lee. That's all I'll say. Um, so... The book supports the Frankie Lee Boo Fund, who's a seven, eight-year-old little boy growing up without a dad, um, and a little boy who's got no legs. So there's a lot of goodness come from it. And uh, and yeah, you know, it remains to be seen whether um, anyone ever does come along and, and do it. Um, but yeah, it's it was interesting to say the least. And, uh, you know, probably... I won't get many Christmas cards on Teesside this year for doing it, but yeah. Do I regret it? I don't know. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Um, you know, I'm aware there's people out there that are 
have been victims of him and you know I, I don't condone that, the part of that you know but also there's there's people that are just unbelievably interested in him um and they'll, in my opinion I don't think they'll ever see I certainly don't think T-Side will ever see his likes again as in a, a criminal but yeah that's a wrap um the blood moon and live by the sword die by the sword uh Gavin Park have done a fantastic job on the cover, uh, as always. Um, and yeah, if anyone wants to click on, you can read. You can you can read it. It's uh, it's slightly different to the Hall of the Moon, but you know it's got his it's got people like school friends in there. It's got uh, his boxing coach. It's got victims in there. Um, as I said, court reports, South Bankers, Dorman. Um, as I said, the Vince Agar, 50 pages on that, and that is an absolutely outstanding, blinding chapter. Um, and, and obviously my bits that are covered in, um, you know, it's got drug dealers in there, prisoners. It's just bits of everything, basically. And, you know, it all helps to add up to to tell a story. Um, and, you know, the last thing I'll say about it, they don't come any more interesting than your leader fees, you know, and, and people that I, I get a lot of messages now. I get a lot of messages from young kids. And, uh, you know, I was in a pub about a year ago and this young lad was like talking to me and he went, can you do me a favor? And I was like, what? And he went, can you just tell me some Lee Duffy stories? And it was like, and this kid wasn't even born when, um, Lee had died, you know, he was in, he was in his twenties. Um, you know, and it's, it's quite, I don't know, it's quite, I don't know, it's, it's sad, but I understand it. But it's like anywhere I am in Teesside now, it's just literally all people want to do. They're not really interested in in me or my stupid haircut. They just literally want to talk about, you know, a guy I've written on, you know, which I was involved. I was, you know, you couldn't write a book on Lee Duffy and not be emotionally involved. I would have did it. Um, I did it out of curiosity. Um, obviously, I was close to the story, but... You know, I, although I thought I knew the story, I didn't until these last three years. Um, and, you know, I've done two books. Uh, well, Paul Venice, have, there's nearly three books on it and there'll be two documentaries very soon. You couldn't really do projects on a, a figure, such a strong, um, strong character as Lee Duffy without kind of taking it home, you know, like... It's work for me at the end of the day, um, you know, but there's a, there's a lot of times when you you start, you know, I've finished Paul Venice's today. It's a very South Bank story. I'll be starting Mick Sorby's tomorrow, Hartlepool, Born and Bred. But when you in when you do another book, um, you know, I've done books on characters and I'm quite good at, like, I almost become them. Like, you know, I, I can think like them. I, I can add bits in. You know, they tell me in, in different ways. or They might say to me, right, I've fucking done this. But you can't write that in a way. The book has to flow. Um, you know, obviously, there's certain people that are, all I know is kind of effing this and effing that when you've got to be smart with your words. And, you know, I'm kind of good. At, like, I, I almost kind of turn into the character. And um, there's a few things, you know, with, with particularly with the Lee Duffy and the Paul Sykes ones where... It's been impossible to switch off, you know, even when I finish work and I'm in bed three, four in the morning and you, you can't help but just have all this kind of stuff that you've been researching during the day. Uh, so there you go, guys. That is the very final book. There's no more other moons. There's no killer moon. There's no final moon. Um, I'm done. I need to run 100 million miles away from Teesside in the opposite direction off to Liverpool, London, Essex, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, it hasn't all been, it hasn't all been death threats and um, sleepless nights. You know, there has been a lot of a huge, a lot of nice messages as well. And um, I think the majority of people just understand, just say, listen, I'm just, I'm just an author. You know, it's just what I do for a living. I'm no different to anyone who is a bricklayer or a barber. Um, I know I need a barber at the minute, don't I? But uh, yeah, you know, that's, it's it's just my job. But um, I really thoroughly enjoyed doing it. And it, it was it was really um, ridiculously interesting, um, you know, to to find out what was, 
yeah, you've read you've read the other books, and they, uh, you know, what I wanted to do with these was just basically make it a Middlesbrough only book because although the other books have been done, there were there were like fifty percent, maybe even more, on towards your Newcastle's, your Tyneside's, your Viv Graham's. I just wanted with these books to just do enough for just basically one hundred percent Middlesbrough, um, and I believe I've achieved that, and and the the Amazon reviews and the you know all the the, the Waterstones. Um, sales have just went absolutely crackers it's nothing to do with me it's nothing to do with you know i'm some great writer or not it's not at all all it's to do with purely how interesting that fella was or how misunderstood he was how i don't know just as i said last night in the video i didn't i don't have any opinion of him um i get told quite often that I wasn't about and I wasn't and um, I'm irrelevant to the story. I've got no input at all. But obviously the people who lived through it and were there, you know, can tell different sides of the story. So thank you for listening to my ramblings again, guys. Um, and don't forget to click and subscribe to this channel because there's going to be a lot more. Uh, I think we, we are done with the Duffy stuff now, but um, I'm going to be going to London next month, spending time with um, Alex Reid. Uh, Dominic Negus, um, Boxing Gyms, Jack the Ripper Walks, who else? Cray Trins Walks. Um, I'm going to be spending time with um, Gary Shaw, Roy Shaw's son, so he's going to be taking me around where, um, because we did the book with Roy Shaw last year, we're going to do Roy Shaw 2 and the documentary in 2021, and he's going to be showing me around Essex and Barking and Dagenham and Stepney and all these kind of places. So our channel is going to be quite interesting. You don't have to put up with it. It's not just going to be me all the time in that stupid haircut. Um, so, yeah, thank you so much. Right, thank you so much for your time. God bless.